Welcome to season two of How's the Market podcast by Keeping Current Matters. You know, it's fun to be in our new studio here and uh, the team has done an amazing job with that. You know, this resource is built for you. You know, at Keeping Current Matters, we believe that every family should feel confident when buying and selling a home. And this week, we have the chance to talk to Tom Ferry. You know, Tom's consistently been ranked the number one coach in real estate year after year. He's going to share his you know unique viewpoint on where we sit right now uh, in this market, what agents can control and can do to win in this market. And we're going to even talk about next year and what he's focused on to help agents win in 2024. So let's get started. Well, man, I, I'm excited to have you on today on the How's the Market podcast. It's a new podcast we're doing here, Tom, and uh, just thrilled to get a chance to sit down and talk for a minute. I appreciate it, man. I mean, you know, you and I get to do so much work together. Uh, you know, I'm always grateful for you, the team at KCM, and hey, man, a chance to have a conversation. Here we go. Right. And I would add this, there's no shortage of things we could talk about over the next few minutes. Oh, my goodness. Yes, that is true. A little, a little bit going on in the business. Um, give me your perspective right now, just what you're seeing. There's a lot of distraction. There's a lot of information. There are a lot of challenges. There are a lot of, a lot of opportunity. You know, it's a, it's a mixed bag. You know, it's, uh, it, it reminds me of every disruptive moment, mm. right? In, in business, in life, you know, when, when Blockbuster was essentially decimated by Netflix, when if you saw the Blackberry uh, Netflix special, when, you know, Steve Jobs said, it's a phone and it has your music and your email, like just like that, a multi-billion dollar business right. was decimated. In every changing environment, you're always gonna see people fall into one of two camps right? The people that want to be fear mongering, the people that want to freak out, the people that want to get upset, the people that want to just argue. And then the people that are, you know, are people which realize having a great bias towards action, being of service, right? And staying with a level head and not freaking out is always a good idea. Right. So with what just happened on Monday, you know, the reality is it's going to get appealed. Right. And, you know, will it go all the way to the Supreme Court? Will it just, you know, move up a few courts? Like, only time will tell. But in the meantime, what are you going to do to serve your clients? Right, right. What are you going to do to make sure that you and your business, you're moving forward? And, you know, just like you, David, I'm talking to CEOs of companies and title companies and mortgage companies and team leaders. And I had a conversation yesterday with one of our um, groups of teams, about 40 different team leaders on a, on a Zoom session. And I said to them, have you communicated effectively with your team? Mm. Have you Have you shared that? this will more than likely be appealed, right? Like that's that's the most likely scenario. And then did you remind them that we have been discussing this for five years? And what we know is there is a disconnect of agents that weren't using buyer agency agreements, that weren't properly explaining all the things that you and I and Alicia Essig right. and all of our coaches know, like, you know, the, we've done all these trainings and we've been doing this for four or five years to get people ready. Well, now it's here. And then the other interesting thing is I've said to everybody, you know, if you think about like most of my clients, right, that are running large teams or big brokerages, at one point in their career, they were an exceptional listing agent. And I say to them, so you've got this killer listing presentation that you're so excited to deliver. And you've got like these, like Felix the Cat, these this bag of tricks that you pull out to make sure that you surprise and delight your client and you give them something that nobody else is doing or it's so unique, it makes them feel so certain that you're the only choice. And then I say, now, contrast that to your buyer presentation. And they all go like this. Oh. Right. And I say, that's an opportunity. This is the time where we, now, now we know something significant is going to happen. We know that several states in, in the U.S. have already made the change, right? right? So, so talking with like Lennox Scott up in the Pacific Northwest, he said, yeah, it was like two weeks where agents were like, oh, oh. And then they're like, wait a minute. It's the only way I can write an offer now. Right, right, right. So I better just get that agreement signed and let's move yeah. forward. So I know I'm probably oversharing, but yes, it's, you know, I've been having a lot of conversations with a lot of people right now. I was having a conversation with Steve Harney, you know, um, and you'll appreciate this. And seems like I'm getting these questions. What should I do? And, and his, his matter of fact response is you should get back to work. Right. That's what you should do. You know what I mean? And I, and I think Tom, you're one of the best at mindset and, you know, just keeping that mindset. What is, if, if, if you're talking to an agent right now, talking to a team leader, 
how, how do you how do you keep that right? Like we can talk about tactics, but just going, hey, I'm going to choose the right mindset every day. So, I, mean, I guess I was kind of hearing that two ways. The first thing is I I take the time to listen. Hmm. I take the time to hear their concerns. I take the time to I, I empathize with their situation. Right? I just I just listen and listen and listen and listen. And as soon as they start repeating the same thing over and over and over again, that's when I finally say, okay. You've told me seven times. Now, let me ask you a question. What do we have control of? What do we have control of? What, what can we actually do? Like we, we can't change interest rates. We can't speed up the process of the appeals. So what, what do we have control of? And it's old school, man. Like you and I've known each other for a long time. Right. The only two things that we can control is our mindset, right? The things we say to ourselves about ourselves and other people, our self-talk, right? It's right choosing to move our body like this. If you're listening only, my arms are straight up in the air. It's really hard to put your arms straight up in the air and even do like this and jump and then say, now while I'm doing this, let's get totally depressed. Right, right. You can't do it, right? So there's, right. there's all these psychological hacks that I use, you use, smart agents use to keep themselves in the right mindset, writing your gratitudes every single day, listening to something positive, turning off the news, all that stuff that you know. But the second thing is, you know what makes the most extraordinary people extraordinary, they all have a bias for action. Right. Right. When in doubt, pick up the phone. When in doubt, text a client. When in doubt, go knock on a door. When in doubt, communicate. And I think where a lot of people are getting stuck, and then of course, it's fall, it's the end of the year, it's been a challenging year, regardless of what just transpired. And I'm watching people kind of slow down on their activities. And my response is now right. is not the time. Now, now is the time to over communicate. And I got a bunch of data that I can share with you about, uh, call it 1,391 clients that have done 7,936 listing appointments just in the last 46 days and how they did it. Yeah. I want to talk about that because, you know, you and I, you mentioned we've been on the road this year right. talking to agents um, and talking about their local market talking about action. Right. I saw a video this morning from a, uh, I know a, a, an author and a thought uh, leader that we both respect, Donald Miller, who wrote Building a Story Brand or yeah. uh, Creating a Story Brand. And he said this, if you're ever stuck in a place, terrible day, you don't know what to do, make a list of what you can do. Right. That's the way you shift momentum right. in, in, in a you know, place like that, because we all get there, you know, we all, we all get to a place like that. So I think you're referring to what you just mentioned is what you've been working on with coaching clients, hundred K in a hundred days yep. for, for anybody that hasn't heard about that, break that down for what it is for somebody listening. It's like, I haven't heard of hundred K in a hundred days. And then what are you seeing coming out of that? Which is, sure. I think the, the reference. Sure. So being in the, the, I kind of describe like what I do for a living is I get people to do the things they try and avoid. <laughs> like that's really my job, right? And I think every leader understands what I'm saying, especially when you're talking about leading independent contractors that can do whatever they want, whatever they want, however they want. So, so you know, earlier this year, we were sitting down asking ourselves, okay, so post the summit, when I've got, call it 6,000 people inside the room and 20,000 people watching on the live cast, could we develop a really simple program that everybody could follow for just a hundred days, recognizing we already knew the rates were crazy. We knew that there was no inventory. We knew that there was no immediate solution to affordable housing. So what could we do? What are some plays that we could run that our coaches could you know, hold clients to, our clients could hold their teams to? And so we launched this program and it, quite honestly, it's very simple. It's, it's nothing more than a set of plays, for example, one is, Hey, here is 12 emails you can send out to your client base over the course of 100 days. And, you know, there some of them are more informative, educational, right? The things we should be doing, right? All the time with our customers. But some of them are also like, "Hey David, if I could sell your home for 7 or 5 or 15% more than your Zillow's estimate, would that be of interest to you?" And, and these, these types of simple emails elicit a response. Now, not, right. not everybody raises their hand and says, okay, but how many do you need to respond? How many do you need to respond? And I, I say most of my clients have an email database of 1,000 or 2,000. Forget the people we know that have three and 400,000. I say, if 1,000 people read that email or 22% of it read that email and four people say, oh my goodness, Tom, you're not going to believe this. We're actually thinking about it, right? 
just like that from one email, they got a listing appointment, they got an opportunity. Then the second part is, and probably the thing that is blown people away the most, and David, you, you know this, a real estate professional gets asked 80 to 100 times a month, one question in every country I've ever done an event in, and I've done an event in 29 different countries around the world. They all ask this question, hey David, you're in real estate, how's the market? Right. And, and my sense, my sense is, that consumer isn't looking for like a Bloomberg-esque answer, right? You know what they really wanna know? And this is like for, you will appreciate this more than most. I believe most consumers actually wanna know three things. Number one, is my equity safe? Sure. Is my equity safe? So I'm sitting at, at, at dinner recently and I, without saying the guy's name, I'll just say he's a billionaire and lives in my building and we become friends. And he says to me, how's the market? And I said to him, your equity is safe. And he smiled and he goes, is my equity safe in Malibu? I said, yeah, your equity is safe in Malibu. <laughs> and he said, what about here in Dallas? I said, absolutely safe because of supply and demand, not enough properties and all these people moving in. He said, what about San Francisco? And I said, might not be safe. Right, might not be safe. And, and so we're, we're in this dialogue about, is their equity safe? Are my home, is my home price gonna go up or is it gonna go down? Right. And I think the real one, and I got this from you and Steve is, how is this market gonna affect my future plans for my home? So, so I think if we, if, if we can take on the mindset of when people are asking, what they really wanna know is, is my equity safe? Then when you do this cool little texting campaign that literally, I'm gonna give you the numbers, ready? 161,915 text messages sent by agents that are reporting, right? 1,391 agents that are reporting in just 46 days have generated just shy of 8,000 appointments. That's awesome. 8,000 listing appointments, 7,936, but who's counting, right? But what do we do? We say, go to, go to Zillow, type in their address, right? Look at their estimate, take a screenshot of it and text it. Hey David, I was inside Zillow today looking for a you know a property for one of my clients. Decided I knew you lived in the neighborhood. Thought I'd stop by, take a screenshot of yours. The estimated value of your property is X. I've got my opinion on this price. What do you think? And you know what it is? It's just a conversation starter. Right. Oh, well, it is. It's a conversation right. starter. And and we know with text, eighty-five to ninety percent of the people respond in five minutes or less and say, "Thanks. I thought it was worth more. Thanks. Are you sure?" But all I'm looking for is the three to 5% of the people that are in their phone, they're gonna sell their house over the next 12 months because their circumstances changed. And it's the, it's the easiest way for agents to do it. And that's really what the program is about. Like, let's do some work, let's send some texts, let's send some emails, and yes, let's also make some phone calls. I saw the numbers. <laughs> in 46 days, the average person's made 218 phone calls. 218, in 46 days. What, what is that, like two calls a day? Right. Three and a half calls a day. So, so they're not even doing the hard stuff. They're doing the easy right. stuff, and they're they're crushing on appointments. You know, this goes back to and I and I've used this when you and I have done things together. The study that Thousand Watt did, yes, that said potential sellers, when you have a conversation with them, they were much more likely to move forward. Yes. And, and the numbers are about two out of three. Two thirds of potential sellers are much more likely just in an interaction. Not being convinced, not be, right. you know, right? Just saying, okay, what what are we looking at in this market? What is happening with equity? You know, what's the path forward? And then you're bringing in the the proof of it, right? If you just do it, is that the missing thing for most people right now? It's the lack of a bias towards action. Mm. It's the in times of uncertainty, I'm going to hide. In times of uncertainty, I'm gonna stare at Instagram all day long. In times of uncertainty, I'm gonna watch Netflix. Um, so yeah, tragically, we're seeing it everywhere. But this is the first, let's just call it the first fall, the first fourth quarter we've been in in a while where seasonality is back at play. Right. Right, like you could make the argument in 20, you know, 2022, the second half of the year was certainly different because of interest rates and everything that happened. But, but we didn't see it the way we're seeing it now, right? We're, we're back into a, if I don't do the work in the fourth quarter, my first quarter is going to be horrible. If I don't identify in the first quarter all the potential sellers in my database and others, I'm not going to be ready for the spring market. I'm not going to make all my money from April to closings in September, October. Like we, we can't be, we can't be stuck right now. We have to be in action 
acknowledging it takes the average, like the average real estate agent generates a lead. You're talking about 115 days from what we've tracked for the last 10 years, 115 days from the time that you meet them to the time you write a contract. So how many days can you go? How many days can you afford right now to push off having that conversation knowing I'm 115 days away? Right. I'd right. argue none. But yeah, and 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 certainly in this market, there's a lot of a ton of fear that you talked about, fear in consumers, you talked about, you know, dinner with your neighbor, fear people in the business. The other thing that as we turn the corner is very true, turn the corner into the new year is there is a ton of people that have put off making a decision yep. because of one reason or another sure. in those conversations that, that lead to that. What are the, you know, one thing that I love about, uh, you know, the time that we spend together, you always have a handle on the tools that people are using right now, whether it be an app, whether it be, you know, a website to help navigate some of those things, anything in your mind that you want to share with people to say, Hey, this is something, this is a tool that people are using right now to help navigate those, those conversations, decisions, things like that. I mean, besides the obvious keeping current, <laughs> <laughs> which by um, the way, on the equity conversation, if you I need know. any information know. on that, that's an area right now, Tom, yeah. that in our business, we should be um, uh, have the courage, I'll use that word, to go out and have that conversation because it's a positive conversation. Right, right. It's it's a right. conversation that that people can get excited about it. But like, like we all know, you turn on the news, you turn on whatever, <laughs> and you don't hear that conversation. So it's right. looking for those pieces there. But but I'm talking about yeah. like, I, I saw you're on with Jeremy, I Palm saying, Agent, yeah, great Palm tool. Agent. You right. know, uh, if you haven't seen Palm Agent, yes. this calculator, you you can describe it uh, e even better, Tom. But those are the types of things that, that, that you know, are making a difference right now. So if I look at my, if I look at my cell phone, and mm -hmm. I think all of us know pretty much the apps that are in thumbs, you know, thumb right. screen, which is where all the action is. You know, ChatGPT is right there for me. Alum, because of Tom AI, just, you know, all of yeah. our coaches' minds inside of an AI. Uh, no doubt that the Palm Agent app, and, and the reason why, and I say this with the utmost respect, my experience with most real estate professionals and, and most entrepreneurs, um, they don't come from an accounting background. Now, I jokingly say every real estate agent on the planet knows exactly how much 2.5% is of $494,863, right? <laughs> but outside of that, it's sometimes challenging for them to really get into whether it's like the 2-1 buy down, right? As an example, right. or just should I buy now or should I buy later, right? Cost of money conversation, cost of equity loss conversation. And that's where that Palm Agent app to me is just ridiculous. The other one is ridiculous in a very good way. The other yeah, one right. is uh, Landglide. I'm a huge fan of Landglide and I'm not an investor in any of these companies. Like I, I wish I could, I wish I was, right? Jeremy's a pal. I don't even know who created Landglide, but Landglide gives me basically every person, every lot, in America, who owns it? And All I think right. that's valuable for a real estate agent. Totally. Um, I think solutions like Revaluate, I think are really interesting. And even though, you know, shout out to the guy that created it, even though I think the UI is a little bit off, I think having tools that can give you some level of certainty around predictive analytics, who's most likely to sell, um, any tool that can help a real estate agent take, um, you know, the 863 people on their phone that have too much of this, uh, David, uh, glasses and sweater, but it doesn't say his last name. There's no email. There's no mailing address. So anything that can append your data today to allow you to market more effectively, not just with a cell phone, but right. email with mailers, et cetera. I think it's all those tools and more. And, and, you know, again, every, everything AI that's moving us forward today. I'm a big fan of a company called high IQ. Uh, you know, we we're collaborating on a product that will do the one thing that causes agents to lose more money today. <clears throat> You've seen me, <clears throat> excuse me, talk about the study where we take cohorts of 90 days of new leads generated by some of our clients. So right. I think of one in particular, she generated like 4,800 clients. Now she has Google advertising and realtor.com and Zillow and home light, you know, HAR, right? she gets them from everywhere. Right. And what we saw was, they were able to close 91 of the 4,800 leads. Wow. And then when we did a trailing 12 month back, looking at the title records, looking at, you know, transference of any addresses, they lost 
400 and 19 transactions. So one of the biggest problems we have today in the US in, in all sales businesses is we generate leads, we follow up a little bit, and then we're we're off to the next client. We're off to the next right. problem we're solving. We're off to, oh my goodness, did you hear what happened to you know NAR, right? And we don't follow up. So we're losing four transactions for every one that we convert. So I'm pumped about this solution where we're now developing an AI with all the right software that can call the leads for you. And we're already seeing that the AI can outperform an ISA, like a telemarketer who's right, doing right. lead nurturing, two right. to one, and it's only six weeks old, David. It's That's only unreal. six weeks old. It still has latency issues. Is, and is this the technology that we were talking about a couple of weeks ago where you're like, yes. it can make a phone call and you can't tell that it's- Bingo, bingo. Uh, and, yeah. and no surprise, Male or female doesn't make a difference. English accent absolutely makes a difference. <laughs> right? There's just, just stuff about that cooler. English accent. Yeah, like, of course I want to talk to this person. And the right. interesting thing is, yes, it's an AI, right? And, and you know, for some people, they get excited and some people get nervous. And some people say, oh, I would never have an AI call my past clients. I'm like, why not? You don't call your past clients. Right. Someone right. should call your past clients. Don't worry about you know. it. Somebody will, right? Right. Every, every new seller lead that's generated is someone else's abandoned Past client, I'm sure you read the same, you know, new report mm -hmm. on all things buyers from the guys who are a thousand watt. And it was like, you know, of people that bought a house from an agent in the last 12 months, like 49% of them have not heard from their agent since the day that they closed. Right. That's a scary thought. So I think AI is going to have a major impact for those of us that acknowledge it, it's not going to replace me. It's going to right. enhance me. Yeah, I, no doubt. I mean, here at KCM, we're working on tools like I'll give you an example, Real Talk, our, our right. uh, teleprompter and script based product, where you can go in and say, I want a script on prices for right. Dallas, Texas, yes. and it'll, yes. it'll give that to you. We'll release that uh, in the first part of uh, 24 next year. Um, what are other areas that you're seeing AI, you know, be a tool for people in the business? You know, how, how do you leverage it? Because some people, are, I, I think, fit into two camps. Like, mm -hmm. I'm going to try to figure it out, and I'm scared as heck is what it's going to mean, right? What are ways that agents can use AI right now? Are you seeing things or hearing about things? Yeah. I mean, I was uh, speaking at a conference this morning remotely uh, in Miami. It's an AI conference. And, you know, shout out to, the, you know, Natalia and Proppy and all those, all those crazy peeps. So the answer is, the mega trend for us is it's AI everywhere, yeah. right? Everything that can be, will be impacted by AI in a positive way. Um, so uh, the question I asked the audience today was, what are the three biggest problems you're trying to solve in your business? What are the three biggest problems you're trying to solve in your business? Now, if you can identify the problem, you and I both know as, as entrepreneurs, as CEOs of companies, that if I can identify the problem and the problem is big enough and I can solve that problem, Typically, I'm going to create a lot of revenue because I'm helping a lot of people because I solved a big problem. So I say to everybody, what are the three biggest problems you're trying to solve in your business? And then I would sit down with ChatGPT and say, this is the problem I'm trying to address and give it as much detail as possible. And then say, now, be the single greatest expert on the planet at solving this problem and give me 25 unique ways you would do it. And just watch what comes out. Now, I'm having conversations with ChatGPT all day, every day, and I'm asking these types of questions. But then I don't, I don't just go, there's the list. I actually said to it today when I was working on unique factors for buyer agency, trying mm -hmm. to figure out like what, what's the value that we could provide? What do we already do, but how do we make it unique and special from a marketing standpoint? And it, David, it spit out like seven answers. And I said, those are very vanilla. Can you be more precise? and be more written from a marketing standpoint. And it goes a little deeper. And I got one and I said, now take that one, unpack it. What materials could I deliver? How could I show up with this? Like, like tell me more, tell me more, right. tell me more, give me more. Just keep and, going, what's, why, why? Right, go down the rabbit hole. And I think that applies to every facet of every problem that a real estate agent faces today. We know what the issues are. It's my brand isn't where I want it to be. I'm not super clear on the productization of both the listings that I take and how do I get 
three or four buyers and at least one listing for every listing that I take and then replicate that flywheel over and over again. The other side of it is the product to them, the service that they provide to buyers. If it's not unique, if it doesn't solve their problems, I'm not paying attention to this, which number one thing they all said they wanted a buyer agent for was risk mitigation. Yeah. Risk mitigation. If I'm not taking that and saying, this is how I do it. This is the value I deliver. But then if you go brand product, the next one is sales and marketing. Right. Right. What are, what are all the holes in my sales strategy, in my marketing strategy? Let ChatGPT and other solutions help expand that. All the different video solutions. Now we have video solutions where I can stand, look at a camera and say, you know, may I have a dog face in the banana patch and just get a little bit of me talking. And then I could go in and I could write the script or have ChatGPT write the script. And I, the robot version of me, can do the right. video. Like, right. This is the single most exciting time on the planet to be in our business. Yeah, no and doubt. I don't know if I gave you the answer, but the, an the answer is it's everything. Right, right. Well, I, I think it's being willing to hop in and figure it out right. and ask the right questions right. and uh, think about things and go deeper. And I think right. some people think, where do I start? And yeah. That. And so I think to your point, what's the biggest issue? I, I got the, where do you start? You go to ChatGPT and you say, hi, my name is Tom Ferry. I'm a real estate agent in Dallas, Texas. I'd like you to ask me 20 questions, one at a time, to understand my business, who my customers are, what my unique factors are, what my marketing approach is, what my work ethic is, so you can help guide me in the direction of building a world-class real estate agent practice go. And it will ask you one question at a time. And at the end of that, you're going to learn a ton about yourself. It's going to learn everything about you. And then you could say, now, here are the 15 different ways that I look to attract clients. Write me a marketing plan that is a annual, quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily, and it'll write the entire marketing plan for you. Right. Right. It's exciting that's, right now. That's awesome. Most real estate agents know what's happening. Good agents understand what's happening, but great agents, they can explain what's happening. At Keeping Current Matters, we help real estate agents become experts. With market insights and marketing tools, you'll not only stand out, you'll thrive in any market. Keeping Current Matters, be the expert. So let's turn to looking into next year. Sure. What's up your sleeve for next year? Anything you want to share that you're doing, planning, um, just going into 2024, which, oh, by the way, is a market that by all indications will continue to be right. uh, similar to where we stand today. Yeah. Maybe some some incremental improvement, but we're not going to snap our fingers and yeah. be into a dramatically different market uh, in real estate. So the thing that I am committed to next year is helping 100,000 real estate professionals in every nook and cranny of the country and around the world untap more inventory. That's the game for me next year. Yep. Helping every one of my clients unlock more inventory, help 100,000 people, whether it's at a live event or a Zoom event or something like this, getting in front of 100,000 people and giving them the tools and the tactics they need to unlock inventory and to keep their mindset right. And I know that sounds simple, but but in times of confusion and worry and doubt, no different from what you and I did during the pandemic when we launched right. Pivot and we did you and I a weekly show, how many people we got in front of during those times as, as a breath of fresh air, insight, right. you know, hey, look at PPP, look at this, look at, we were just exposing them to what was possible and how they could continue to perform and do it in a safe way. We helped a lot of people, David, you and I. Yeah. We helped a lot of people. I see next year being one of the most important years of my career. How mm. am I going to get in front of 100,000 people next year and help them all take 15, 20, 30, 800, 1,000 listings? That's what I'm committed to. That's awesome. That's an awesome vision and just word picture and and helping folks maintain it and maintain the mindset in, right. in this business. Right. Um, is you is, is we kind of wrap up this year, you talked about conversations that need to be had that pay off in 100 days. Mm -hmm. um, what 
really, as we get started into the new year, how do you coach somebody that says, I want to do things differently and I want to set some habits in my life? Because we we all know January will roll around. People will do that. How do you get ahead of the curve on that? And what are the things that you've seen in coaching thousands of people work in that? So um, I'm going to be remiss that I cannot remember the university that did this study, but I remember the stats. And it was basically not not the beginning of the year, but if I want to develop a new habit, you've got a 3% chance of developing a new habit by saying, I want to develop a new habit. Yeah. And that's all you do, right? You have an 85% chance of developing that new habit if you get it up in visual, you tell five, six, eight people, this is what I'm committed to, right? You start with some baby steps and some simple tasks that can get you into the game. But the real secret sauce is accountability. Mm -hmm. And accountability doesn't have to be to a business coach like me. And accountability could be to your nine-year-old daughter who you say, if mom goes out and does this activity every day for the next month and a half, you get a trip to Disneyland, Orlando, or whatever you want. And believe me, the nine-year-old will remind you every single day until you ingrain that. And and even then, you only have an 85% chance of developing that new habit. Even then. But most people, as we both know, start the new year with these intentions in their head. Right. They don't get it into the ethos of their life and their business. They don't ask for help. They don't look for support. There's a reason why people go to AA. You with me? There's a reason because I need to be a part of a community of people that are all doing the same things. So so if you just look around at some of the most successful programs where behaviors are changed, AA, Weight Watchers, it's not the gym. I saw a funny meme this morning of a person who says, I signed up for this gym membership six months ago and I haven't experienced any new changes. So today I'm going to drive in there and actually talk to him about it. (laughs) That's what most people do. Right. Next year, I'm going to sell even more houses. I'm going to make even more money, but they keep it a story inside their head. They don't get it up in visual where people can walk by and say, oh, David, would you go to a Tom Ferry seminar and get all motivated with your goals on the wall? Right? Like you got to deal right. with some of those people. The haters actually drive those of us that are passionate, but I've got to get that community of people around me where I create the accountability to actually change the behavior. It's why That's awesome. people that run yeah. marathons do it with a the group. They don't go on their own. Right, like, right, right, right. We all know why. So it's just deciding what you want and then getting into that community. That's where you're going to win. Right. Absolutely. You know, I, 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 in life, change happens when it's one-on-one. What, like, Tom, when you're mentoring me, when right. something is happening life-on-life, one-on-one, it can happen one-to-many, no, yeah. no doubt. Yeah. But the other thing I would add to that that I think is missed in accountability at times, and even people listening, someone can only be held accountable if they want to be held accountable. True. Right? You can say, hey, I want to be held accountable, and Tom, hold me accountable. I'm not going to do anything that you ask me to do. Yeah. Or I'm not, you know, I'm going to lie to you about it, or or I'm not going to show up. But if you want to be held accountable, then you can do anything. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, that's amazing. A lot of my, a lot of the, the men and women that have mentored me over the last, for me, three plus decades, they, they yeah. all said it differently, David, but they all said the same thing. So only two kinds of people on the planet. Those of us that have a clear vision of where we're going, why we're on this planet, what it is we're trying to accomplish, where we're going, what we're building, if you will, right? Not just our business, but for our life, right? Our legacy, right. for our family, for our, for our friends, Right. And then everybody else. And and I don't think there's an accurate study of this, but I've heard it's only the top 1%. I've heard it's 5%. I just know it's a very tiny percent of people on the planet that actually say, this is what I want for my life. This is where I'm going. And if the person listening right now, if you could just take a minute and write down, it's 10 years from today, it's 20 years from today, and my life turned out exactly as I wanted it to be, what would you write? Hmm. exactly as you want it to be. What would you write? Now, you know me. I've done that multiple times over the last 30 years. And I said in August of this year that the 20-year vision that I wrote for my family and I in 2015, we had achieved everything on the list except we weren't 20 years older. Yeah, We achieved everything we wanted. So, So I say that because once I know what I want, then I embrace accountability. 
But when I don't know what I want, and I'm just, as the great Zig Ziglar would say, just another wandering generality going from one problem to the next, could have done it better with the Zig accent. Those, <laughs> those people may raise their hands and temporarily say, yeah, I'd like to be accountable, but to what? So, right. so we need to have a vision we're living into, not, not just so life becomes extraordinary, so you move out of the mundane, out of the problem, out of the drama, and into what's possible. That's awesome. I, it's it's so important, and, and I I appreciate you sharing that distinction because it, it kind of dovetails with our busy uh, our business right now. And what I was going to say is, there are a lot of people that are busy, right? But but I I used to have a good friend that would always say, "You're busy, but you're busy doing what? Right? Are you busy?" you know, focused on the goal, like to your point, here's where we want to be. Yeah. The work that I'm doing today gets me there. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. I appreciate you sharing. Yeah. Grateful for you, for you and what you and your team mean to uh, agents in, in the business and have meant um, to, to everybody listening and to KCM. And I could go on forever, Tom. I'm grateful for that. If somebody wants to be coached by, by, your organization, what do they do? Give them a quick. I would say go to tomferry.com. There's probably a button that says learn more. <laughs> and uh, and that would probably be it. And, and, and David, that happens thousands of times every single month. And, you know, every single month we bring on 250 to 300 people. And what's interesting right now is when I think, you know, here we are, it's Friday as we're filming this. Um, just this week, I've gotten three phone calls from people that, you know, they're in my phone. I know who they are. They're legendary real estate agents, but they were struggling. And, you know, these, these yeah. very honest conversations with people that, you know, they're all in the Wall Street Journal top 1000 list, all three of these people. And they're like, I just feel like what I'm doing right now isn't working. I just need some perspective. I need a different outlook on, you know, what's working and what's not. So, so I'm not shocked when I get those phone calls, especially in an environment like this. Where right. I get nervous is for the, the people that aren't listening to podcasts like this, that aren't showing up to their office meetings, that aren't reaching out to their manager, that aren't going to the top agent in their office and saying, how you doing it? You know, Phil, Phyllis, whoever it is, right? If you're not, if you're not looking to find out what is working today, you're in trouble because the world yeah. is moving really fast and then take everything that transpired in the last week with lawsuits and NAR and what's happening and follow up boss just sold and oh my goodness. And there's, right. and then my goodness, a war in Israel and a war in Ukraine. And you know, what's going on with China? Like every, everybody's just, our, our mutual friend, Steve, headlines yeah. do more to terrify <laughs> than to clarify. But, but people are getting wrapped up in that versus how can I be of service? How can yeah. I help my clients? How can I move my business forward? What can I do in moments of uncertainty when everybody else is in a panic to just stay the course and go serve more right. customers? If you're not doing that right now, you're in trouble. Yeah, totally. I mean, it, there, there was interesting. I, I learned something or maybe just saw something. It was very, it was uh, an image of three buckets. Mm -hmm. And typically when we think about our business, everybody kind of knows there are things we can control, things we can't control those lines get blurred every day, yeah. right? And this is a market where that is true. And there's actually a third bucket. And I think it's the bucket that that you um, are focused on going forward. What are things I can influence? Right. We can have right. influence in inventory. There may be an element that feels out of control, but I can take action and have influence mm -hmm. in that category. Clearly things I can't control, clearly things I can control. Right. And there are things that I can have influence over. Yes. And I think that will be the key going into next year. I agree. I agree. Hey, congrats on your podcast. Hey, thank you. Grateful for you joining us for a few minutes and uh, and just sharing your wisdom. So as we wrap it up, um, I am grateful for that, grateful for everything you've shared. Uh, and, and I just want to go back to uh, the conversation uh, where we talked about just getting started. Yeah. That'd be my encouragement. Yes. You, you laid it out, Tom, of whether it's chat GPT, whether it's texting somebody, whether it's making a phone call, just do the work. Right. Bias for uh, action. And that's, that's exciting. So grateful for you. Thank you, my friend. I'll see you soon. All see right. you on the road. <laughs> that's for sure. Take care. 
That was an amazing conversation with Tom. I always enjoy uh, the time that I get to spend with Tom. You know, I mentioned that we had traveled together this year. And here's one thing I will tell you. He is the same on that podcast as he is one-on-one, as he is, you know, in any environment and cares about making a difference. You know, the Housing Market Podcast is another resource that we have here at Keeping Current Matters to help you be the expert in your local market. So if you like this podcast, subscribe, share it with somebody that you know uh, could use it um, so that we can help them as well. You know, as we as we look forward to this new season, I'm excited about the guest we have on. I hope you'll be back uh, to the How's the Market Podcast.